This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The New York Yankees faced the Boston Red Sox for a Sunday afternoon game at Fenway Park on Sunday, July 4th, 1965. The Red Sox were an average team, never accomplishing any recent postseason play and not finishing over 500 in nearly a decade. New York was coming off five consecutive World Series appearances, including a loss to the Cardinals in 1964. But the team was struggling under new manager Johnny Keane, who took over for the Yanks after the firing of Yogi Berra. This audio recording is from the New York radio broadcast featuring announcers Phil Rizzuto and Joe Gargiola. Bobby Richardson stepping in. by Jim Bouton, whose record is four and seven. Mom Boquette, the leading Red Sox pitcher the last five years. He's into the windup. The right-hander delivers to Richardson. The first pitch is hit high in the air. This could be a repeat of yesterday, and it's off the wall, way up there. Bobby has to stop with a long single. Lee Thomas made a fine recovery, and we almost had a repeat of a situation that developed yesterday when Jim Lonberg threw that pitch to Richardson to start the ball game, and he parked it into the screen for a home run. This one, though, becomes a long single. Well, I'll tell you, that had the fans buzzing here at Fenway Park. Mambo Kett, first pitch of the ball game, off the wall for a single. Now here's Tony Kubek. Kubek takes the ball. Richardson batting at 275. Boy, he's had a hot bat. One home run, 24 RBIs. He's at first base. Here's Tony Kubek hitting at 204 with two homers and 21 RBIs. The right-hander against the left-hander. Tom Boquette, the right-hand pitcher. Kubek batting left-handed, as he does always. Hits the first pitch down the center field for a base hit. And Tia has it, and Richardson has got to hold his second. That ball was hit so hard to make it impossible for Bobby to move to third. So three pitches in the ball game. The Yankees have runners at first and second, nobody out, and the batter will be Tommy Tread. Well, Reg, we had quite a free game show with Mel Parnell and Pete Reynolds, who played here in Fenway Park, about that left field wall, and Bobby Richardson tattooed it the first time around. Did they have any significant remarks? Yes, Jerry, I think you've heard them all. One, the pitchers in this park have got to keep the pitches down because Mon Bouquet got one up high on them. Yeah, he did, and Bobby got it up high. Okay, here's Tommy Stretch batting at 282, 12 home runs, 36 RBIs, leads the Yankees in just about every offensive department. The pitch to Stretch is an attempted at bump that's fouled back on a screen strike one. Tom was not really bunning to sacrifice the runners along. He was trying to beat out a hit. Now, Cressetti has something to flag to Tresh. Strike one, the count to Tommy. Elson Howard in the on deck circle. Ball game just getting underway. First two Yankees, Richardson and Kubek, on with singles. Mambo catch set. Here's the pitch to Tresh. This one is foul back on the screen, strike two. Tresh has a five game hitting streak on the line. Kubek. Came into the ball game with a six-game streak. Now he's run out to seven. Boyer leads the Yankees in that department with ten. So three Yankees are moving along with hot bats. In fact, the Yankees generally here in this series have picked up the hitting tremendously. Sixteen runs the first night, six yesterday. Tries the switch hitter, batting left-handed. The runners lead off. The pitch to Tommy is hit high in the air and a fairly shallow center coming on his man, Tia, and on the run, he catches him on a nice play. On the dead run, about knee high, man, Tia takes one away from Tommy Tresh. That ball, for a moment, looked like it might drop. So there's one away, and now coming on Ellie Howard. that 15 and 12 lifetime. One of the few pitchers to have a lifetime edge on the Yankee ball club. 
Elston Howard batting at 215, three home runs, 17 RBIs. He's had two in the last two days. Home runs, that is. Ellie takes high and outside. It's ball one. For one away, Bobby Richardson at second, Tony Kubek at first. Defensively for the Red Sox, Tillman is catching, Tony Horton at first, Chuck Schilling at second, Ed Bursu at short, Dalton Jones at third in the outfield, Lee Thomas in left, Mantia in center, and Canigliaro in right. Uh, Mambo catch set. Here's the next one to Howard. In there. Strike call. One and one. Red Sox having a difficult time with their outfield. Yastrzemski out of the starting lineup, their best hitter. And the regular left fielder. And Lenny Green, injured. Gary Geiger, with broken bones in his hands, also out. So they've been crippled in the outfield as of right now. Here's the next pitch to Howard. Foul back on the screen. One ball, two strikes. Right now, Billy Herman manager of the Red Sox has had to play his regular first baseman Lee Thomas in left and his regular second baseman Mantia in center. One ball, two strikes, Ellie Howard, Richardson and Kubek moving off the bases. Here's a pitch by Mambo Kett. There's a high drive to center field, not deep. Mantia with the glasses down, gets under it easily and takes it. Bobby tags up just to draw the throw and then goes back to second base. Two down as the runners hold at first and second, and now here's Joe Pepitone. Pepitone hitting at 267, eight home runs and 34 RBIs. Now there's an exchange of baseballs as Pepitone waits for the plate umpire, John Rice, to check it out, and then it flips it back to Bill Monboquette. You know, we've got a definite Boston flavor here in our old-timers acceptances, which we'll give to you in just a moment. You'll see right now, while uh, Monboquette gets ready, Joe Cronin, Bobby Doerr, and Jimmy Fox have all accepted invitations for the old-timers day, July the 31st, at the stadium. Pepitone takes a fastball outside and it's ball one. Don't forget, Saturday, July the 31st, old-timers day at the stadium. And the opposition, the Cleveland Indians. Hottest ball club in either league right now. They've won 18 of 22. Joe Cronin, who was the Sporting News Player of the Year in 1930. Bobby Doerr, the Sporting News Player of the Year in 44. And Jimmy Fox, the MVP in 32, 33, and 38. Well, he's got a few statistics besides that. Batting camp in 33 and 38. Mambo catch to Pepitone. A drive down the right field line. Base hit. It's in there. Here comes Richardson. Kubek coming around third, but is being held up by Frank Cassetti. And going into second base is Pepitone. So the Yankees have a one to nothing lead. Pepitone a double down the right field line. And that's RBI number 35 for Joe. One behind the team leader, Tommy Tresch. Third hit off Mambo Kett. Yankees one, Red Sox nothing, top of the first. Nestor Lopez, sixth batter in the Yankee lineup, coming on, batting at 234 with four homers and 17 RBIs. Now Mambo Kett wants another baseball. So the switch is made. Capitone at second base. Kubek at third. Shoot out. Top of the first. Yanks one. Red Sox nothing. Bill Mambo Kett into his windup now. The pitch to Hector is a strike called on the outside corner. Yankees will be heading for Detroit right after the ball game. Got a doubleheader there tomorrow. They'll be there four days. They've got five ball games in four days. And then on to Minnesota for a weekend set. And then the All-Star break. So ten big ball games facing the Yankees between now and the All-Star break. Here's the one-strike pitch to Hector. Fouled off, and the count is no balls, two strikes. Well, that ball just shot back there. 
they have the stands fairly low here and close to the playing field so that foul balls, when they go in there, they go in in a hurry. And I do not advise spectators sitting in the lower areas to take their eye off the ball. Beautiful day, July the 4th, 1965. The next one to Hector Lopez on the ground, in the hole, base hit. Two seconds in, here comes Stepanton, he'll score. And the Yankees are ahead, three to nothing. Hector Lopez, a two RBI single, puts the Yankees out front, three to nothing. hit off Bill Mongo catch. The batter now, Roger Repose, hitting at 273. He's 3 for 11. Two home runs and six RBIs. And the Red Sox bullpen is in action right now as Mongo Kett running into trouble here on the top of the first. Jay Ritchie, right-hander. He's made the last two ball games. Mambo Kett in big trouble here in the first inning. Roger Repose. He was 0 for 4 yesterday. Here's the pitch to Roger. Check swing fly into the stands out of play. Strike one. Roger literally carried the Yankees in that ball game here on Friday night when he drove in four runs. Sparked the first rally. And a three-run homer wound it up. Yankees way out in front of eight to nothing, and then they went on to get eight more. All right, Hector moving off first. Here's the next pitch to Repose. It's in there for a strike. No ball, two strikes. Repose just recently called up from Toledo, where he was batting at even 300 at the time of his recall. Six feet three inches, 195 pounds. Hails from the state of Washington. There's the number 43 on his uniform. Straight up stands. The pitch by Mondo Kett. Backs him off the plate. Ball one, strike two. Boyer in the on-deck circle. They do not play repose to pull right now. Mantee in center. Just a shade to the right of second base. Dalton Jones at third. Has moved in even with the bag and gives repose about 15 feet of the line. Okay, Mambo Kett again. Gets the tie from Tillman. Set, delivers, and Repose swings and misses. Strike three. First strikeout for Mambo Kett. And for the Yankees in the first inning, three runs on four hits. One man left. Score after a half inning of play. The Yankees three. Red Sox coming to bat. Okay, we move into the bottom of the first inning. Jim Bouton on the mound for the Yankees. Yankees lead three to nothing. So Bout has been presented with a nice cushion. And the only thing we've got going right now in either the American or the National, Detroit failed to score in the top of the first inning playing the Senators, and Cincinnati failed to score in the top of the first playing the Phillies. The Phillies had a little uh, extracurricular activity over there the other day. Here's the first batter facing Bout. It's Chuck Schilling. Schilling. Second baseman batting at 292. Three home runs and seven RBIs. Fouls the next pitch off. No balls, two strikes. Yesterday in Philadelphia, Frank Thomas and Richie Allen, National League leading hitter, ended up in a brawl before the game started. So those things happen in the heat of battle sometimes. All right, Bowden into the lineup. The pitch to Schilling is a curve that's low, and it's ball one. Now the wind seems to have shifted a little bit toward that left field wall out there. Blowing in as the game started. Bowden again, the one-two pitch. There's a drive to right field, high in the air. Hector Lopez moving toward the line. Got to go, one hand it. The wind stopped that ball. Almost let it get away, but finally caught up to it. That ball was slicing and was being held up by the wind. So there's one out 
That'll bring up Dalton Jones. You know, the Red Sox have got some pretty young ball players in the lineup today. Dalton Jones is 21. He's playing third. Tony Horton is 20. He's a third. And Canigliero, the right fielder, is only 20. There's the first pitch by bounce to the left-handed hitting Dalton Jones. It's low at ball one. Jones batting at 292. There's a drive to right field, hard hit. Lopez backed up this time and takes it, two down. Tony Hort now, 20-year-old right-hand hitter, power hitter. Boy, he's a big guy. He's got the chubby cheek. Nobody on, bound ready, delivers the clear of the in there to Tony Horton, strike one. Bowden is really moving right along. Not taking any time, gets the sign from Howard. Here's the next one, the big change up outside, one and one. The one strike pitch to Hart. uh oh, that Ready. One ball, two strikes to Tony Horton. Two out, nobody on. The pitch, the changeup is low. Two and two to the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the first. Yankees three, Red Sox nothing. Horton batting at 271. He's got one home run and six RBI. There's a drive to left. That ball should make the wall. It does. Well up there. Fred grabs it and Horton held to a single. So, Tony Horton tattooed the left field wall for a base hit. First hit off bounce. And now here's Felix Mantia. Mantia, the American League starting second baseman in the All-Star game, batting at 324. 12 home runs. He leads the American League in RBIs with 58. Set delivers and it's outside. Ball one. Bowden again set. Check short the pitch to Mantia. Ball two. Two and over the count. Takes his time just a little bit. Fetch delivers, and it's outside. 3-0, the count to Mancia. Round again to Mancia. Ball four, and he walks him. Sox have runners at first and second with two out of the batter now is Lee Thomas. Thomas hitting at 273, 13 homers, 38 RBIs. A single by Horton, a walk by Mantia. Red Sox with runners at first and second. Lee Thomas the batter. The left-handed hitter against the right-handed pitching Jim Bowden. Yanks lead three to nothing. Here's Bowden's first pitch. It's a curve in there, strike one. Bottom of the first inning. Well, the National League came up with its all-star starting lineup today. Those of you who may not have seen it, we'll give it to you in just a moment. 
Bowden sets again. The runners move off the pitch to Thomas. A loud foul way down the right field line. Strike two. Starting lineup for the National League. The game to be played in Minnesota on July the 13th. Corey is the catcher from the Braves. Banks of the Cubs is at first. Rose of Cincinnati at second. Wills of the Dodgers at short. Allen of the Phillies at third. In the outfield, Aaron, Mays, and Stargill. Aaron of the Braves, Mays of the Giants, Stargill of the Pirates. All right, bout two-strike pitch. Back Thomas off the plate. One ball, two strikes. Lee Thomas and Lou Clinton were exchanged even up between the Angels and the Red Sox the middle of last year. And Thomas has been a real beauty for the Red Sox ever since. Done a whale of a job. Bowden ready. The pitch, the big change up is slapped into the left center. Long run for repose and stretch and nobody can get it. just a looping fly ball in the gap in left center. Repose on the run and stretch on the run. Both went for it. Both stretched for it. Neither got to it and the ball bounced between the both of them toward the wall. And that allowed Mantia to come all the way from first to score. So it's the Yankees three, the Red Sox two, and here's Canigliaro who takes the strike. Tony C batting at 260, 15 homers. 36 RBIs, and that is RBI number 39 and 40 for Lee Thomas. A slow hopper down the third base side foul. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Oh, we got one going. Did uh, Ronald have anything to say as far as the hitting was concerned about that wall risk? might help a batter up here. Well, Jerry, um, he had a great deal to say, and so did Parnell. In fact, uh, Armed Forces Radio uh, very often takes the soundtrack from our pre- and post-game shows, and I'm sure they'll take this because there was so much good talk about that wall. We'll try and get some of it in later. Okay. Two strikes to count to Tony C. Thomas at second base. The fast ball inside as Canigliaro bounces out of the way. It's one and two. years, that's been the big story here in Fenway Park. The big green monster in left field. And a big art of one Sports Illustrated on it a few weeks ago. Pitch to Tony C is blowing in the dirt. Two and two to count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Again, ready. Set, delivers, foul behind the plate. Count remains at two and two. Hal Rennes is throwing in the Yankee bullpen. The Yankees came up with three runs in the first on off Bill Mamboquet. Now the Red Sox countered with two off Jim Bowden. Getting the sign from Elson Howard. Thomas moving off second. The pitch to Canigliaro. The big change up. He swings the pitch and strikes three. He went after that big balloon. Throw for the Red Sox here in the bottom of the first. Two runs. Two hits. One left. And the score after one full inning of play. Yankees three. Red Sox two. <laughs> You can get, you get 
Tobacco taste. Tobacco taste. A so rich and rare. A so rich and rare. A real taste. A real taste. And that's really rare. You get no bad, no fancy stuff. Real flavor with every puff. Tobacco taste so rich and rare. A real taste that's really there. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. They get the camel and try a real smoke. right now for station identification. Your attention, please. You are tuned to Yankee Baseball over WOKO Radio, Albany, New York. Thank you. Cleve Boyer coming on, top of the second inning. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Mambo catch first pitch to Boyer is a fastball on the outside corner, strike one. Boyer moving that average up there, batting at 249 as the game gets underway. Seven homers, 25 RBIs. Mambo get again to Cleet Boyer. Swings and misses, strike two. No balls, two strikes to Cleet Boyer. Yankees have won 10 of their last 13. They got a big five-game set with the Tigers coming up and then four games with the Minnesota Twins. Two strike pitch to Boyer. It's outside. One ball, two strikes. Yankees will be back at the stadium on July the 15th against the Washington Senators. Here's the next one to Boyer. Hit on the ground, a right field base hit. A high fastball just slapped on the ground between Schilling and Horton. And Boyer's got himself another base hit. Boy, that's the way it goes when you got the hat bat, and that is the 11th straight game that Boyer has hit in. He's got an 11-game streak going. All right, here's Jim Bowden. Bowden, 3 for 28, batting at .107. Mambo gets pitched to Bowden, is bunted towards first. Horton up with it, starts to go to second, changes his mind, and flips the showing at first. So a good sacrifice for Bowden. Moves Boyer to second base. The play going from three to four. And now here's Bobby Richardson. Red. Jerry, we've got a little hole here because the catch is out of July. This is 4th of July. And I know that this is a very particularly sensitive uh, date for you. Uh, your two times in the Marine Corps as a fighter pilot. And uh, I thought that we'd uh, think about something. And we'd ask our audience to think about it see if they can come up with it, and we'll ask it in the second inning. How many places in the United States is our flag flown 24 hours a day? And how many by customs, and how many by sanctions? Bobby Richardson coming on. The pitch to Bobby is in there for a strike, and Bill Mambo just jumped a foot when he let that ball go because it was right down the pipe. Well, I know one. Well, our engineer, Joe Cooper, ought to know one. He's setting a naval boat off of it long enough. All right, Richardson with a one-strike count. Boyer at second, one away. Mambo catch, curveball is outside. One and one. One ball, one strike. One away. Boyer at second base. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Yankees have five hits, the Sox two. Now Mambo Kitts says something to Chuck Schilling. Schilling at second base moved in. Now he's going back to his regular defensive position. Sometimes a pitcher will place an infielder, depending on where he wants to uh, pitch him. Fastball's outside and low. Two balls and a strike. Two and one to count. Top of the second inning, and now Mambo, Ken, and Schilling are discussing something. 
Looks like Chuck now takes two steps to his right. Rombocat has been pitching Richardson outside. First, this could be a decoy now. All right, the 2-1 pitch to Bobby. A curve, it's outside again. Three and one. Three balls, one strike. But Mambo Kett wanted to do a chilling with Richardson, a straightaway hitter. He wanted to get him over in the hole between first and second. Bobby will slap the ball out there, as Boyer did, to get on. So chilling now is where Mambo Kett would like him to be, and now Mambo Kett is a happier pitcher. All right, the 3-1 pitch on the way to Bobby. A ground ball to Dalton Jones at third. Nice play and a tough hop to flip the first. There goes Boyer to third, and it's a double play. That one went from five to three to six. Five, three, six. And the Yankees are out of there here in the top of the second. No runs on one hit, nobody left. And the score after one and a half... Yanks three, Red Sox two. Okay, we move into the bottom of the second inning. Ed Brasseau, the shortstop, is coming on. And to that question posed to us by Mr. Red Barber, we're going to let him give the answer to you at the end of this inning. Well, I did a little research, Jerry, when we were in Baltimore. And uh, that might uh, give a little hint. <laughs> I see you're in the right place. All right, here's Ed Brasseau, the shortstop. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Take the ball low. Ball one. Mountain for the Yankees. Mon Boquet for the Sox. Brasseau batting at 224. Five homers, 14 RBIs. Bowden again to Brasseau. Outside this time, 2-0. Oh. Jerry, I think we ought to explain um, that our radio man from the Navy and for our our broadcast, Joe Cooper wants to know about does this uh, pertain to uh, naval ships at sea? We say no. There's a drive in the left field base in. A sharp line drive between Boyer and Kubek. And Brasseau is on with a single here to lead off the second inning for the start. Sadly, Ed Brasseau, who has his master's degree, plans on becoming a coach in California on his retirement. He said his retirement will depend entirely on how quickly Rico Petrocelli comes along. And that's the way of this game. Youth moves the old timers aside. Bob Tillman fouls one off Elson Howard's leg and it's strike one. Yankees three, Red Sox two, bottom of the second inning. Bob Tillman 28-year-old catcher, batting at 217, five home runs and 21 RBIs. For two, moving off first, the pitch to Tillman is a curve down and low, ball one, one and two the count. These Red Sox have been reeling and stumbling. They have really had some tough times of it. Their ace reliever, Dick Raddatz, having an off season, a lot of key injuries to key personnel. Pitch is a slow grounder, Pepitone has it. Over to Kubek for the fourth to second base. No chance to go back to first to get Tillman. And there's one away as Brasseau is fourth to second by Bob Tillman. Play goes from three to six. It's actually a very close play at second base. Ball is hit right on the end of the bat. Towards the second base and Bobby Richardson. Pepitone cut in front. Had time to get to it and flips to Kubek. So they're one out. Here's Bill Monboquette. Mambo Kett batting at .094, 3 for 32. Right-hand batter, right-hand pitcher facing the right-handed slant of Jim Bowden. Boyer moving way in, looking for a possible button. There it is. It's fouled back on the screen. So Billy Herman wants his pitcher to move the man along. And he's going to leave it up to Chuck Schilling to drive in in the event that he can move the man to second base on the sacrifice. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Bottom of the second. Here's Boyer way in. Mambo Kett hits a high bunt. One hop in front of the mound. Boyer has it over to Richardson. Nobody was covering third, and Kubek had to leave second base to move over there. So it's a good sacrifice for Bill Mambo Kett. Play well, went from five to four. Two outs. 
Dillman at second base, and the batter now Chuck Schilling, who flied to right in the first. catcher moving off second. The pitch to Schilling at second base is low and outside ball one. Chuck Schilling. Now the Red Sox. Five years. Hails from the New York area and Long Island. Bouting again to Schilling. A fastball in there this time. One and one. One ball, one strike. And a lot of white pillowy clouds floating across the landscape here. Now Bowden sets again. The next one is Schilling. A ground ball. Flew back to his left. Stops it behind the bag. Throw to first. Not in time. Here comes Schilling. And he is out of the play. Now the throw is Never throw the house. Well, that play went from 6 to 3 to 2. As the hit for Schilling. Schilling out. 6 3 2. Pepper's going to Howard. And for the Red Sox, they're in the bottom of the second. No run. Two hits. One man left. The score after two full innings of play. Yankees three and the Red Sox two. Now, Mr. Barber, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you. And I think we're all going to be educated just a little bit. Well, I don't know, but I got curious, Jerry, when we were in Baltimore on this uh, beginning of this trip. And I figured that the one place to find out where our flag flies 24 hours a day uh, was to go out to Fort McHenry. The first time I had gotten the idea about our flag flying someplace 24 hours a day was when I stood at daybreak on the top of Mount Cotabachi when I was uh, out at uh, Iwo Jima on a USO tour. And the commanding officer told me that the flag there flew 24 hours a day and he told me how often they had to replace it because the wind uh, would tear it into shreds. Well, Fort McHenry, of course, is the place where Francis Scott Key, during the bombardment, uh, wrote the words to the South Bank of Manor. Not the music, but the words. And so our flag, by function, flies there 24 hours a day, and also it flies in Baltimore at the Mary Pickles Guild's home, which is known as Flag House in Baltimore, which is the home of Mary Pickles Guild, who, with some other ladies, made that flag that Francis Scott Key wrote about. So there's two places in Baltimore. The third place that the flag flies by sanction is at the Iwo Jima War Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery. But uh, by a house rule, the flag flies 24 hours a day over Congress. It flies by, sanction, by custom at Iwo Jima, by custom over the Arizona at Pearl Harbor, by custom over a dormitory at Gettysburg College, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That dormitory was used as a hospital during the Civil War. By custom at the town square at Teos, New Mexico, where Kip Carson climbed the flagpole and nailed the flag up there so nobody could take it down, even if they lost its scrimmage. And at the War Memorial in Worcester, Massachusetts. Well, I've just been educated, Red. Well, I was educated, Jerry, and I think it's an education that we all should think about more often than just one day a year. Very so. Tony Kubek is the batter, and right now he has a two-ball, no-strike count as we move into the top of the third inning with the Yankees leading 3-2. to two. Two balls, no strikes. Top of the third. Next one to Kubek is lying to right field base hit, and Tony is starting to wield that hot bat. He's been plagued with that bad left shoulder most of the season. And suddenly now it looks as though Tony has a healthy left shoulder because he's been popping the ball. That's his second hit of this ball game. He singled the center field to score to run in the first. Opens the third with a single to right. Now here's Tommy Kresh, who flies to center in the first inning. The sixth hit off Mon Boquette. Bill Mon Boquette, the right-hander set. The pitch to Kresh is outside, ball one. Kubek with a false start at first base, trying to upset the catcher. Be amazed what that'll do to a catcher when he sees that runner take that one quick step. He just starts to bounce. He'll come up throwing sometimes. Uh, Mom will get again, the right-hander set. Pitch to Tresh, long drive foul down the right field side over the roof. Well hit way out in front of the ball was Tommy Tresh. 
Armando Kett seems to be using a lot of breaking stuff today. He's got a good fastball when he's right, but he's been throwing a lot of breaking stuff. Slow curveball. All right, Kubek moving off first. Throw over there. Has him back. Tony Horst, young first baseman. Put an extra tag on Kubek just to be sure. Now we're set as Mambo Kett gets the ball. The next one to Tresh. There's a curveball low. Two balls, one strike. Yankees three, Red Sox two, top of the third. Marvel sets a 2-1 pitch to Tresh is hit softly into right field. Coming on is Canigliaro and gets under it and takes it and took it as though he might not get a hold of it. That ball almost landed on the ground before he got to it. Looks like he had it, then he had to take two quick steps to come up with the ball. So that gave the fans here a thrill. Now here's Elston Howard, who flies to center field in the first inning. Ellie 0 for 1. It's the first pitch foul out of play, and it's strike one. And pitching Howard high and outside, which can be a dangerous thing in this park if he's strong enough to pull the ball. Three gently blowing in from center field, not too strong. Here's Mambo Kett. Set, pitch to Ellie. Strike caught the outside corner. No ball, two strikes. One away. Kubek with the leadoff single at his first base. Mambo Kett again. Set the next pitch to Howard. Check swing foul back on the screen. That ball looked like it might have hit Howard in the knee. He kind of turned around and got his bat down there. And it just sliced off it back on the screen. So the count remains at nothing and two to Elston Howard. with a sign from Tillman. The right-hander sets. Here's the next one to Howard. Swings and misses on a fastball on the letter. Strike three. That's strikeout number two for Mamba. Yeah, yeah, good stuff on that one. And here is Joe Pepitone. Pepitone lofted the double into left center to score Richardson and Kubek. Take that back. He lost it a double in the left center to score Richardson. Lopez scored Kubek and Pepitone a little later. Now Mambo Kett sets and then steps off the rubber. Wants a little more rotten. Two outs, Kubek at first base. Yanks three, Red Sox two. Mambo Kett delivers to Pepitone in there and it's a strike. Bill Mambo Kett moving to that fastball. He's effective with it. He's got a good curve, but not when he uses it too often. Sometimes the pitcher falls in love with a certain pitch. And he gets tattooed pretty good before he finds out that it's not the one he ought to use most. There's a fastball and misses outside. It's one and one. One ball, one strike. Frank Pacetti coaching at third base. Vern Benson at first for the Yanks. Late umpires, John Rice at first. It's Bill Valentine. Second base, Bill McKinley at third. It's Hank Soar. Mambo Kett again. The pitch to Pepito. Just misses outside. Two balls, one strike. Gets the sign. Here's the next one to Pepitone. This is outside again. It's three and one. So Mambo Kett is fishing for that outside corner. Missed it on three occasions. And it's a three-one count to Joe Pepitone. Tony Kubek 
at first base. May be on the move. Let's see how Johnny Keene plays it. Yankees lead 3-2, to two, top of the third. Kubek with the lead at first. And a throw over there as Mom Bouquet has something of the same thing in mind. Kubek again with the lead as Mambo Kett steps off the rubber. Now he's back on. There goes Tony to pitch to Peppercorn. It's hit high in the air to straight center field. And Tia getting under it with a glassy down. And the side is the side. So the leadoff single by Kubek went away. Boy, the Yankees no runs on one hit, one left. And the score after two and a half, New York three and Boston two. So we move into the bottom of the third inning. Dawn Jones, young third baseman coming on. Good enough. On the mound. Three to two ball game. Yankees out front. And here's Red Barber. Red. Okay, Jerry. And the young left hand hitting infielder. Now it's third. John Bunsen fouls the first pitch out. Calvin Jones, number young man, has five ball to right field. The Yankees are leading three to two. Talking about the wall and trying to boil it down to what it means to a ball game. The first pitch, the ground ball wide of first up is on the gut, he'll cross the back and cover him. time for the hour. What this wall means in Boston, the left field wall, is that no league is safe. In other words, any ball club can come up with a bunch of runs in an inning by a couple of balls that are part of it. In other words, as we were talking to Manny McKinney, he said, well, when you came into this league, this year, what was the first thing they told you about this wall? He said, you got to play for a beginning. So the Yankees went out and got three, and the Red Sox came right back to two. And here is Fortune following the pitch-off. He singles to start the Red Sox two running back in the first to carry up on the left field. One down. This is a, a very vital game to the Yankees. They've been struggling all season to get even. And they have taken a run at it. Now they're one game away from 500. There's a high five ball out to right center. Lopez, Andre, sometimes he's down. Andre, and has it, and two are down. If the Yankees can win this and then put the double header tomorrow, they're in the 500 position. And the balls have no, they can't challenge the customer. They can't run at the big thing until it gets even. That's pretty plain in any walk of life. You've got to be even before you can go forward get out of the hole, you got to get out of depth, you got to get from behind the eight ball, any way you want to put it. Here's Mantilla taking it slow, ball one, right hand center, walking the first inning. But the Yankees know if they can win this one today and have a good week at Detroit and Minnesota, they're back in it. There's a high fly ball out to left field. Waiting to strike, face to the wall, makes the count. One, two, three, for Boston has a run to the easy inning, bad in order. And the score, at the end of three, the Yankees three and the best. The next part of this game will be brought to you by Valentine Beer. The best way to enjoy the next part of this game is with Valentine Beer. It's more to fit of trick. Jerry, uh, he's here to fill in on the other game, but on the 4th of July, I've got a little story. I was talking to Bob Fitchell, the guy of public relations for the Yankees, and I said, Bob, I want to get a couple of 4th of July things in. To me, but I'll be sure that they're in contact with the ball game. So I think he should fit. You remember a coach around the lake, uh, Buster Mills? Sure do. He's got for the Yankees right now. Uh-huh. Well, do you know what his fifth name is? His real name? Colonel. Or Sergeant. Colonel. Colonel. Buster Mills. And in World War II, he got to be a lieutenant. And can you imagine what went on when he got on the phone and said, this is Lieutenant Colonel Buster Mills speaking? Yes, he got a lot of attention. <laughs> have that uh, problem, and uh, I'm going to tell this story. In the Navy, I'd uh, call up to those um, carpool men, and I'd say, this is Captain Coleman, and they'd say, Navy or Marine Corps? When I told the Marine Corps, I got a different answer. <laughs> I went down a few notches. Well, let's see, quickly, Senators 2, Tigers nothing after two and a half, Royals lead the Indians 2 and nothing after two, National League, Cincinnati, and Philadelphia scoreless after two, St. Louis failed to score on the top of the first, playing the next. Red. Now we have Hector Lopez placed up as the Yankees are playing the Red Sox. Here at Boston, getaway game. The Yankees have won the first two. Driving for their second sweep of the three-game series this year. 
Just for the road, the Yankees uh, got Rollins, pitching three from the Angels. And he took the curve for a strike. And by the way, the Angels are making life very miserable for the White Sox. Al Lopez got out of the hospital and flew out to Los Angeles in time for that beating last evening. I guess he wished he stayed in Kansas City. White Sox have now lost five in a row. Six put on in there. This, uh, the complexion of this race has changed so much that the sporting news that we've gotten this weekend is already out of date. One minute. And you just can't keep up with the way this thing is going. White Sox dropping back. Five straight. Yankees are hoping to move in. See if we can do it. Look there, take the chair, blow outside. And I would say that uh, if the Yankees can do business where well, they're going to meet a couple of sterner competitors in Detroit and in uh, Minneapolis, we've got a pennant race for the Yankees in it. Let's say they can do it. And this one is a key game today. I'm going to the Lewis Lopez swing, hit the right, back down to short. The two over the first in time are two running steps. Go for Lopez. Speaking of the problems of the sporting heroes and turning in St. Louis and getting the paper to you, that big front speed is uh, Eddie Fisher. And he's running to Greece since they turned I think one of the reasons baseball has the hold that it has is because it's power of life so much. But it's uncertain. It's up and it's down. It's tribulation. It's fire. Boys and sorrow. And here is Roger Rapport. Flames and has a loop back. Now here's an example. And it's just it's happened in a few days. The young man is suddenly patched up from Toledo. Boom, a home run at Baltimore. Boom, a home run at uh, Boston. Single in Boston. Sacrifice fly in Boston. And yesterday, the collar. Jerry, that's a jolt, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's always a jolt when you go here, but it just depends on how often or how long it lasts. Especially you're breaking in and you just broke in. He takes the bow inside, ball one. I don't know whether anybody told the pose this or not, Gary, but Mon Bouchard is an extremely selfish man when he's got a baseball in his hand. He's a tough pitcher, and um, I think, too, it's tough for a youngster to break in with such a flurry. You know, you can ease into it, but suddenly with that big flurry, you kind of think, well, maybe I have to keep it up. Nobody can do it. Mon Bouchard comes down, and the pose swings with the high fly down the left field line. It's into the sand top. One ball, two strikes. We have one out here in the four. The Yankees are holding on to the fat end of a squeaker. Three to two. All scoring in the first inning. On the he works rather good everything. PPA for the Boston Mound staff. Lifetime, he's beaten the Yankees. Fifteen games and lost to the ball time. Tillman is his captain. Here's the pitch. Change up, it's hopped up. There is Captain Tillman, right at the plate. Now set back. There it is. And Boyum, base hit, second inning into right field, seventh straight game. The player representative of the Yankees. Right hand batter. This is over for the strike. Van Bouquet giving him the platter. Frank Rosetti looking down at third. Van Benson at first. Infield is Horton, Gilliam, Bruce, and John. Right hand is pitch. Low outside for a ball. One and one. In the outfield for the Red Sox, here on a beautiful sun bench afternoon, Lee Thomas is in left. Felix Mantilla in center. The right fielder is Tony. For Negri Time being called briefly by played up by right. Boy, the hitter stepping out. Now he's in. Time is in. The pitch swung on a ground ball right back through the pitcher, back in second, in the center field, and Boyer hits it right through the middle. The voice behind us. I think you haven't been listening lately in uh, Crunchy Joyce, is the voice on the press box, public address system. 
at the park for the suggestion. Two down. Boy on, and here's Bowser. Right handed batter. Sacrifice. Second inning. The defense is straight away on Jim. And the doubleheader is start tomorrow. Whitey Ford goes in one. Stafford, who has been taking x ray treatment for a sore right shoulder. Stafford will warm up for the other game, and if he can go ahead, he will. If not, then Johnny Keen said, Please don't ask me who you'll be. I don't know. I would say that we've eliminated one possibility if Stafford can say. And that happened when we saw Rennie jump up and start throwing. Of course, he hadn't quite eliminated himself yet, but if he's on tap as a long man today and gets in, he's out tomorrow. Pitch is low. It could be that um, if everyone is hoping Stafford can do it, including Bill. Now, he has to throw the ball. I told him not to. And he won't until he starts to wall and slide the point. But if he can't do it, then it looks as though it might be Hamilton. Pitch in for the strike. Throw him on Speaking about Hamilton, I wonder if people stop and realize that the middle men on the ball top, the fellows more on the roster, actually can make a break to your team and it's run for the penalty. Six, into the track. Now, if you're a star performer, a frontline performer, if you're a regular, you're playing all the time. No problem with you because you're in there. Your only problem is with yourself. The proper use of your own talent. But if you say you're a Steve Hamilton and you're in the bullpen, you can't start. You've got to wait. You pitch if somebody else can. There's a ground ball and hit the second. Killing over the first, and that's it. Four runs, one hit, one left. Score, middle of the four, single game. Yankees three, Red Sox two. Constituted, it will hop a high fly ball to 
Billy Gardner coaching the third. Keep Ronald the third. Thomas around drive. Base hit right down in the right field corner. The ball is in play. Thomas is coming in the second race. Lopez is three years. It's about the first one, he reached out and hit a high outside change of pace and he positioned uh, the ball, floated it between the left and center fielders. The fifth one, you could have hung the clothes on right down about six feet clear of the right field. Number five, and here's Tony Conigliaro. Local right-hand hitter, Rennick is in the bullpen and throwing the second time. Pitches on the outside. Ball one. So Johnny Keane can't worry about tomorrow in Detroit and the two ball games there. You got to worry about this one here, Boston. This one that he hopes he can uh, grab to get on the plane with at 500. Speaking of getting on the plane, we have an acting road secretary, Bob Fischel, to do that. Bruce Henry, the uh, regular traveling secretary, is on the sad journey home. Mrs. Henry's father died. Bruce will join us in Detroit. Up to Dimitri Arrow. Oh, outside, ball one. There's nobody out. Bob is in trouble. The Yankees leading 3-2. One run does not mean a thing in this ballpark. Low outside, a fair ball. Boston fans who have had very little to be optimistic about or happy about are cheerful now. Last in the fourth. Then it just come on. We're going to have 
some changes among our friends at the Fourth Estate. Several of the writers who will not go on with us, and we'll pick up some new ones uh, tomorrow. Now here is Brousseau, who is one for one. Six chairs go outside. Dick Young of the News stays with us. Another copy of the Times will go home this evening. And Joe Durso will join us in Detroit. Trip to uh, Brousseau. Chairs, one in the two. Leo Levine has just made a trip with us to the Tribune. And he goes uh, to New York. Al Rosenthal will join us in Detroit tomorrow. Jerry Mitchell stays with us for the Post. Came for Videnzi of the Journal, American. Joe King of the Telegram. Joe Kropinski of uh, Newsday. Jim Ogle of the New York Star Ledger. Foul back. And while I have this opportunity, uh, we all missed Bruce Henry. We've got everything set for us to go to Detroit. He's a person that, unless you met a road trip for the Yankees, you couldn't appreciate. He is a very, very efficient and a very pleasant road secretary. And I've talked with um, some of the Yankees that have been around, and they say that he's the best one that they've ever known. Pitch is outside. Two balls, two strikes. The two, the hitter. Red Sox, four. The Yankees came up with three at the bell, three. Brennan for leaving, delivers. Has the ball punched out in the right field. Right to Lopez, right field waiting, and makes the cut. One out. And catch the Tillman. The book on Bill Mundell's cat, who is a hard man to beat at any time, is that you have more success if you're going to handle him if you do it early in the ballgame, once you let it get settled, you get increasingly sticky. Tillman takes the inside, right up by his hand, ball one. One down, nobody off. Ground ball hits the third. It almost knocked for you down. Here's another throw to first in time. It was a sharp high bounce that knocked Boyer to his knee. And if you wish an amplification of the term hot corner, he is the man I refer you to. Well, we have two out. Uh, boy, he just got Now uh, here's the picture. Bill Mundell with that, right hand batter. Then his pitch is too low. Ball one. Beautiful day up here at Boston. Low inside. One and one. I wouldn't be surprised. Take all the major league towns. If you had to pick one for summer weather, this would be it. And the proximity of Cape Cod. Terrible outside ball three. I'd like to hear this uh, Craig Gowdy, who is the broadcaster up here. Remember, you see this stadium. He talks to visiting broadcasters around how it goes down to a little place on Cape Cod all the time. He's got a couple of miles watering. Puts it over for the strike. Three and one. I know when Frank Fritz is broadcasting up here, he hates the lead. Three one pitch. Inside. All four. One with that throw. Two over two down. Back to the fourth. Red Sox has gone ahead. Thomas Doubles and Camigliaro Homer. And let me say this, that Johnny Kane is not as precipitous about lifting Martin as you might think just to say a double and a home run and he takes his man out when they pull a one-run ball game. If you had seen the double and the home run and how hard they were hit, you wondered how the baseball could stand it. Here's Chuck Schilling, who's one for two. Hit the drive out into the center. Both coming in, coming in, coming in. Can't get there. But that's it. They hit. And one was set. The lead runner stops the second base. So Schilling loops one at the short center. Now the Red Sox have seven hits. Each side has seven. And here's Dalton Jones, the left hand hitting young third baseman. Back 
trying to stem the tide. Adjust the glasses. Jones off the two. It's the curve, low inside. Ball one. Billy Gardner, third base coach, has had more traffic than in the last three or four days. Bennett delivers low. Ball two. Two and off. Two balls, no strength. Second has to go to a sequence for time. There's a line drive foul. It almost cuts the third base coach's head off. That close to gardening duck. Working back of the play is John Rice. The umpires on the bases are Valentin, McKinley, and Thor. That feels a step back into left on Jones. Just to that slightly. When it pitches, Dalton cuts, falls it on. Two balls, two strikes. I guess that was a pretty good ball play a fight down in Philadelphia. Before the game started last evening, out in plain view. Between Allen and Thomas. Dick Young has told us that uh, Thomas has been put on the waiver list. Hey, it's a shot shot, ball two. Whenever I hear about a ball player's fight, I always remember back in the mid-30s, Charlie Dresden was managing a Cincinnati Hyatt, a bullpen catcher. One on the action list, a bullpen catcher by the name of Gus Britton, and he used to be a fighting bullpen catcher of the public court. The only guy he ever hit was one of his own pitchers, Paul Derrick. There's strike three swing. That is all for Jones. Lenny gets out of the threat. But not before the Red Sox put two in the bank. Two runs, three hits, two left. Four and four. Boston, four. And New York, three. Montcat, Bill Monbocat, will be a lot harder to get along with now as we go into the fifth inning. He's got a one-run lead. He was in the first inning behind three. Then he was behind one, and now he's plus one. It'll be Richardson, Kubak, and Craig. All of them hitting. Start off the fifth inning. If you want to know, as far as the hard-bitten professional baseball people are concerned, about Batting. They don't care anything about percentages. The pitchers, the managers, the opposing players, they want to know who's hitting right now. Who hit yesterday? Who's hitting today? And they will leave the percentages to the radio broadcasters who detail them endlessly, etc., etc., etc. And his body, who is one for two, he's hitting right now. Did a double triple home run yesterday. Ground ball to third, a hot one, but it's handled by Jones and over the first. Two hot, and we have one out on one pitch. One down. Now we have Tony Kubak. In fact, Richardson, speaking of hot hitters, has hit in 17 of the past 18 games. So I guarantee you they talk about him in the clubhouse and in the dugout. And Kubak has come back to work, and he's hit safety in seven straight games, and he's two for two today. So they know that his number is 10. You might not remember that Rizzuto used to weigh a 10, but they know who's wearing it today. Pitch is in there for a strike. No ball, one strike, one out. The Red Sox. Grousing a little bit about the schedule. Pitch swung on as a ground ball to second. Killing over the first, and two back out by a wide margin. The Red Sox have got to play a morning game tomorrow, Minnesota, and then a night game. And if you think 
ball players like to get out and play a morning game. He just hasn't met any ball players. Not even one. Well, I don't know. Maybe Cresetti wouldn't mind. But you know what? A... Here is Craig. This is Benson's last five. He turned the ball up this year. He's batting a line. Foul. That's not Fern Benson down. Her face goes. Hitter, and a good one, running up handed. Now the Boston Bully Boy, Bill Monbucat, delivers and it's high inside. Stretch has to lean back. As has been pointed out, but just in case you got in with us, lots of you do, put on your car radio, coming in out of the water on the beach, coming in out of the backyard. Monbucat has beaten the anchor 15 times. It's outside. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Two out. Juan Bacchette was troubled in the first inning. Ridden on, throw it, sent. Get two out during the set. Right hander delivers. Press pick, high out, high ball three. Two and one. Joe Dresser's column in the New York Times this morning on our Pedro Raymond and his Cuban palm ball. I think you'll find it very enjoyable. And it's the fact that this umpire made him change his uniform in one inning. There's a ball hit foul. Got his three and two. Strength hanging in. Mondo Cut trying for a one, two, three inning. First time today. Pitch it works. And there's a high, high pop up into short cut center. The short cut for two is out and comes it. He has it. And Mondo Cut gets the one, two, three. Four then. The single game in the middle of the fifth. It's now an official ball game for the home club four and the visitors three. And before Joe Gaggiola takes the killer, we'll pause the station identification. Your attention, please. You are tuned to Yankee Baseball over WOKO Radio, Albany, New York. Okay, Thank Joe, you. Get her up there. Tony Horton is the hitter. And Hal Reniff delivers the pitch to Horton. It's low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Washington scored, destroyed nothing at the end of four. Lock a two-run home and Wicker Cam against Nam. Two to nothing, Baltimore leading Cleveland, bottom of the fourth, Pappas against Terry. Here's the one no pitch now. It's low and it's 2 no. Chicago, Los Angeles, Minnesota, Kansas City, not yet underway. They lost in the Mets, nothing, nothing at the end of one. Turkey against Cisco. Cincinnati, two and the Phillies, nothing. Bottom of the fourth, nuts all against Polinsky. Pittsburgh, one. Milwaukee, nothing at the end of one. Fisher against Law, Bailey a home run. The Giants did not score top of the first hurdle against Buell. Los Angeles and Houston not yet underway. And Hal Renner took enough time for us to run down the scores, and now he's ready with the 2 0 pitch to Tony Horton. Swung on and fouled off, out of play. And it's two balls and a strike. Red Sox lead, four to three, bottom half of the fifth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. One ball, two balls, one strike to count on Tony Horton. Horton single to left and scored in the first inning, flying to right in the third. Now running, delivers, low ball three. Three balls, one strike. Horton takes a look at Billy Gardner. He was coaching at third base. And with the kind of power this fella has, you can bet he's got the green light and he can swing if he likes it. Here's a 3-1 pitch. He swings and it's a hot shot. Tony Kubrat, one hand, over to first in time. Nice play. Kubrat roamed about five foot steps to his left, made a one-handed pickup, and fired across the pepitone in time to get Horton. 
Well, there's one out and brings up Felix Mantilla, who walked and scored in the first inning and flies the left in the third. Lennon to Mantilla, tap, foul. Elton Howard comes up with it. Red was talking about Ramos and the Cuban palm ball. I asked him what Ed Hurley said to him in Baltimore the other day when Ed Hurley walked out to him. The mound. And Ramos said that Hurley asked him to wipe off the ball. Here's the one strike pitch to Mantia foul back. He said, wipe it off when you go to your, your mound. And Ramos says, I looked at him and I said, but Hurley, I'm the cleanest pitcher in the league. I always wet my fingers before I throw the dirty ball. And for some reason, Hurley didn't appreciate that kind of humor. Good story on Ramos. Run up, take a little bit of time. Here's the two-strike pitch to Mantia. Nine arm curveball, way outside, ball one. Felix Mantia. The fellow has bounced around, but a real tribute to him that has come back to where he is the starting second base on the all side team. Swings and misses, and he's out on strike. Renner took a little bit off his curveball. Mantia was way out in front. That's the second out, second strike out for Renner. And it brings up Lee Thomas, who is two for two, two doubles. He doubled in the first inning, drove in two runs, doubled and scored in the fourth. He's fell in 273. Two base hits will get him up above the 275 mark. He fouls one off. Nelson Howard got that one right off the right foot. Strike one. Ellie just kind of standing there looking down. Hoping that his toes are still all there. This foul tip that comes straight down. His fingers more than anything. Of course, Ellie's got the bad big toe to begin with. He really got a nasty one just about a week ago. Thomas swings and this one to dead center field. Roger Ripples flips the glasses, waits for it, and makes the catch. One, two, three for the Boston Red Sox in the fifth inning. So the score, at the end of five, it's the Boston Red Sox four, the New York Yankees three. A four to three ball game. And the Red Sox are out in front. We just gave you the scores, no changes on the scoreboard. And it gives us a chance to remind you about Old Timers Day, which will be Saturday, July 31st. In addition to the many great names that will be coming in, Joe DiMaggio, Bill Carey, Don Newton, Larry Dolby. One of the old-time favorites, let's put it that way, will be entertaining before game time, Guy Lombardo and his orchestra. Tony Martin will be around to sing. So it should be a big day. Joe Cronin will be there, President of the American League, Bobby Doerr, Jimmy Fox, some of the other names. So that's July 31st. Before that, the Yankees will be home for a series against Washington, the Red Sox, or the White Sox. And the Yankee Stadium ticket office is open tomorrow from 10 to 5. So why don't you take a look at the schedule, pick the dates up, and drop by the Yankee Stadium ticket office and pick up your ticket. Old Timers Day, July 31st. Tickets, of course, they're moving fast. Still plenty of left. But don't wait till the last minute. Remember what happened on that day. Elston Howard. Lead off here. Howard flying to center and was out on site. Bill Mambo kept. Leads four to three. The right-hander delivers to Elson Howard. It's high, ball one. One ball, no strike. Ron Boquette. 
curveball. Low, it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. The Detroit pitchers in tomorrow's game, Lowell and Sparma. 2-0 pitch to Howard is the strike. For the uh, Yankees, it'll be Whitey Ford definitely and Bill Stafford. Stafford a little doubtful. Remember, he's just getting over tendonitis in his right shoulder. But if he feels okay, it'll be Stafford and Ford against Lolich and Sparma in Detroit tomorrow. 2-1 pitch. Strike two. Ellie started to swing, held up, but the curveball caught the outside corner. And the count levels out of two balls and two strikes. Mambo Ket has a one-run lead, four to three. Here's a two-two pitch, fouled off, out of play, right side. On the roof, beyond first base. Ellie just got his bat out there. So the count remains at two balls and two strikes. Once again, the 2-2 pitch swung on a bouncing ball. Eddie Bridge threw it short, the big hop, the throw in time, and Howard is out. So there is one out in the stick, and it brings up Joe Pepitone, who doubled and drove in a run in the first inning, fly to center in the third. Mambo Ket, real good slider, and had real good control of his breaking ball. Neil Blanco begins to throw for the Yankees. Pepitone swings a base at the right field. Pepitone singles the right. And with that base hit, that burst of the Cubans to throw the zero. We're rooting them in there, Phil. Well, beautiful day and good day to enjoy the ball game. Here's Hector Lopez. Pepitone is first. Tony Horton holds him close. Lopez singled and drove in two runs and bounced out. The pitch swung on and missed strike one as Hector tried to hit one in the right field. Lopez tried to punch one between the hall. And a little bit of confusion maybe because Pepitone is looking at Corsetti. And now Pepitone checking with Benson. Lopez chased a bad ball as if it were a hit and run play on. Lead by Pepitone, the pitch is outside. One ball and one strike. There's no answer on the hit and run play. Some hitters like to get an answer. Most of the time, they just put it on and take for granted everybody's got the sign. Pepitone will lead at first base. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Swung on, bouncy ball. Third baseman Jones has it over to Schilling. One out over to first. It is a double play. A double play. Five, four, three. Schilling. A very quick pivot at second base. The ball was not hit sharply. And he had to get that ball on his way to first base in a hurry. And he did just that. And that ends the sixth inning. No runs. It was one hit, no errors. And uh, nobody left on base. So the score at the end of five and a half innings. Boston Red Sox, four. The Yankees, three. Best tasting filter cigarettes. Winston. Golden tobaccos up front. Good taste.
Tony Canigliaro to lead it off. Canigliaro hit a big two-run homer to give the Red Sox the four to three lead. Here's the pitch by Rennes. Tries to bunt and misses at strike one. July Independence Day and another important day is National Foundation Baseball Day. March of Dimes Day is the way you interpret it. Here's the picture swung on and missed. And we certainly urge listeners to subscribe to the March of Dimes in your community. Give us your support. March of Dimes Day. One ball, two strikes. Migliaro waits the pitch by Renniff is swung on and missed and struck him out. That's the third strikeout for Renniff. He came on in the fourth inning after the home run by Canigliaro. He got for two. Tillman walked Mumbo Cat a single to Schilling. He got Jones in the inning. And as we've had everybody since, here is for two. Pursue single in the second and slide the right. Strike. A good fastball. Now they want to look at the ball. And they're going to change the ball. In fact, they're going to throw it out. Seems like every time there's a call strike now, they want a new ball. Renniff is ready in the pitch. Almost hits him the curveball. The two turns away from the pitch. That's one ball, one strike. One out. Four to three, the Red Sox lead. Bottom of the sixth inning. Washington four to one over Detroit in the fifth. Baltimore and Cleveland tied two two in the sixth. One one pitch. Swung on and missed and a strike two. Middle of three. Mets nothing in second. Cincinnati 2, Philadelphia 1 in the fourth. Pittsburgh on a home run by Bob Bailey, leading Milwaukee 1 to nothing in the third. Cubs lead the Giants 4 to 1 in the second. And the 1 2 pitch now by Renner to pursue. Swung on and missed. Struck him out. Four strikeouts. It's an off speed pitch, a breaking ball that Renner is throwing. The one pitch that's been getting the strikeout point. And here's the Bob Tillman. Tillman into a force play and bounced out. Here's a fly ball down the right field line. Could be trouble. Hector Lopez coming over fast near the line. He can't get it. Trouble. The ball bounces into the stands with the two-base hit for Bob Tillman. A high fly ball. It was fair by a couple of feet, and once it hit the hard ground, it bounced into the stands, which are right next to the foul line, and Tillman is on with a double. They play the big guy to pull that ball, and Lopez had a long way to come. Came a mile and a half, but it was not enough. And here is Joe Mambo Chet. Mambo Chet sacrificed and walked. Right-handed batter. Red Sox lead four to three. Bottom of the six, two outs. Pitch is outside, ball one. One ball, no sight. Bob Tillman at second base. He's had some problems on the base. Ball two. I guarantee you that nobody's going to pick him off second because the lead that he has is not much of a lead. In fact, right now he's standing on the back. One, two, three steps off, four steps off, five. That's it. End of lead. If he'd end up getting picked off, I think his wallet would be sliced. 
Two nothing pitch. It's a strike. Rennes, for some reason, has a problem pitching to uh, Mumble's catch. He walked him in the fourth inning. Two one pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bottom of the sixth inning, Red Sox are out in front, four to three. Renner Freddy, the pitch, swung on and missed, he struck him out, and Renner ends up striking out the side. Five strikeouts for Renner. And that ends the inning for the Red Sox, no run to his one hit. No errors, and one man was left on base. The score at the end of six, Red Sox, four. Yankees, three. The next portion of this game will be brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans where dirt hurts most. Red Sox are leading four to three. Bill Mumble catch. Delivers to Repose. Swung on and missed. One ball and one strike. Well, they think, Phil, that they've got a little bit of a book established on this youngster. I think sure. you're right, Joe, but I don't know whether it's going to work, although he did strike him out on that same time pitch last time. Well, Hitting and pitching is a constant battle. They're showing him the fastball and changing speed and trying to do it with off-speed breaking pitches. There's a fastball outside. Two balls and one strike. When you start to hit the pitchers, they change. And they start to get you out. And then you change. And you start to hit them again. And then they change. And it goes on and on. Like the the dumb wardrobe with all those changes, Joe. You want to repeat that for the uh, West Coast, Phil? You get it? <laughs> Sharp today, our uh, Rudis Caduzzo. I like that the guy does that call in Cleveland. Two two pitch. There's one well hit. Center field. Mancy is going back near the warning track and makes the catch right up against the fence. Roger Repose. Hit one, deep to right center field, and Felix Mantia made the play right next to the fence. So, there is one out. Here is Cleet Boyer. Parker is the on-deck hitter. He'll be the pinch hitter. 
Boyer is two for two. He single a right and single up the middle. Takes a curve ball outside. Ball one. Rapport has really hit that one. But he hit it in the big part of the ballpark. Not many home runs hit in the center field section here. Here's one line drive, left center field. That's going to plug the gap. One hop off the wall. Boyer around first. He's picking for second. Here comes the throw. The slide, not in time. Boyer is there with the double. Three for three for Boyer. Green Boyer at second base with the double. This is 11th double of the year. And I'm sure as you've been hearing all day, he's on an 11-game hitting streak. Dick Reddit gets up in the Red Sox bullpen. Bob Kiefenauer is throwing for the Yankees as Ray Barker comes on as a pinch hitter. Four to three is the score. Red Sox lead. Top of the seventh. One man out. On Boquette takes too much time and Barker backs out. It's ball one. Boyer is now up to 258. One ball, no strike. Ray Barker, a pinch hitter, with Boyer at second base. Four to three to score. Red Sox lead. Swung on, a little looper in short center field. Mantia got a bad break. Now he comes in, makes the play. He brought back on the ball, but it was hit hard enough to where he could retrace his steps and hauls it in. So there are two away, and it brings up Bobby Richardson. Rumble Kent, very obvious, has a good slider going for him today. A lot of the hitters right about at the handle. And the ball seems to be hit well, but doesn't carry. And that's the spot for the slider, the handle, or the trademark. Boyer in second base, Mumbo said, really taking a lot of time. He's nursing a one run lead. Four to three is the score. Now he's stuck. That's Boyer. Here's the pitch. Strike. One strike. Three Boyer. 18 for 41 in this streak, which is a 439 average. Ah. One ball, one strike. Bill Kane figures it up that he has moved up 37 points from 221 to 258. And it's Boyer who's on at second base. Bobby Richardson, the count of one ball, one strike. Pitched by Montbouquet, is outside, two balls in the strike. Red Sox lead. Two men out in the top of the seventh. Raddatz continues to throw in the Red Sox bullpen. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Two balls, two strikes. The count on Bobby Richardson. Two men out. Top of the seventh inning. Cleve Boyer at second base. Third base into the afternoon, a double. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Richardson, high, ball three. Now it's a full count, three balls, two strikes. Two out. Mambo kept. Ready now. Checks Boyer second. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Richardson. Swung out and hit. Struck him out. Bobby Richardson out on strike. And that ends the seventh inning for the Yankees. No runs. It was one hit. No errors. One man was left. 
The score at the end of six and a half innings. Boston four, the Yankees three. Between Friday afternoon and Monday morning, there's an experience called a weekend. A weekend can be as noisy as a firecracker, well planned as an invasion, frustrating as a wet match, or quiet as a mouse. But all weekends have one thing in common, the magic quality of making people want to be together. Your car provides a big part of that magic, and with a tank full of improved Atlantic Imperial gasoline, your weekend takes on added magic. For Atlantic Imperial cleans where dirt hurts most in your car's engine. Atlantic keeps your car on the go, 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 keep on the go with Atlantic. Yankee pitcher, Deepenauer coming on in relief. Reniff did a good job. Jim Bouton started. And after Bouton gave up the home run to Coniglial, Reniff came in and did a real good job of holding the Red Sox that the Yankees could stay in this game. And now it's up to Deepenauer to hold them. And to lead it off, it'll be Chuck Schilling. Schilling, Jones, and Horton. And now to bring you the play-by-play, here is Phil Rizzuto. Thank you, Joe. Bob Tiefenauer, 6'2", 185 pounds, making his ninth appearance for the Yankees. He's won one and lost one. His last relief appearance at Baltimore on July the 1st. First two innings, didn't give up any runs. Schilling is two for three, fly to right, beat out an infield single and single to center. Tiefenauer's knuckler is in there, strike one call. The attendance today, 17,291. Next pitch, swing and a foul tip off the umpire's mask, and Johnny Rice shakes his head a couple of times. That hit him solid. Nothing in two on Schilling. Yankees scored three in the first. They've been blank the rest of the way. The Red Sox came up with two in the first and two in the fourth. Knuckler popped up. Kubek moves back in the shallow center field. Pounds the glove and makes the catch. One away. That brings up Dalton Jones, who fly to right, bounced to first, and struck out. On deck, Tony Horton. Renner. For now, I told Pepitone, look out for the bunt. Swing and a miss, strike one. But Joe is busy talking to Bill Valentine, so he didn't see the sign. But he'll be ready anyway. A knuckle hit on the ground. Foul the first, backhanded by Pepitone. Nothing in two. A soft line of right to Kubek. Two out. Hit it right off the end of his bat. Here's Tony Horton. Single to left, line to right, and bounce to the shortstop. Yankees are out hitting the Red Sox. 9-8. But the Red Sox lead 4-3. to three. Horton swings and misses an upper ball. Strike one. And now it doesn't waste much time. There's a swing and a foul tip, and that hit right in the lake. Boy, he's really getting whacked. One in the mask, one in the leg. Nothing in two. As Chief and is throwing nothing but strikes out there. On deck is Felix Mantia. The two strike pitch. Rain to left center field. That's going to be in for a base hit. Off the wall. Tommy Church backing up, up with it, and Horton's in with a double. Repose made a good try for that ball. He leaped high, but it was over his glove and hit the scoreboard. So Horton goes 
doubles the left center, the first hit off Steve Now, the ninth for the Red Sox. Fourth and second base hit, here's Mantia, who has walked, fly to left and struck out. Red Sox leading four to three in the bottom of the seventh. Mantia swings and misses, strike one. On deck, Lee Thomas. Ramos is up in the Yankee bullpen. Ethan Alice said, delivers a foul outside of third, right in the Yankee dugout. Nothing in two. Ethan Alice rubs up the new ball. Hand is set. His pitch is lined to left field. Stretch coming in. Can't get the ball and a throw to the plate will not be in time. And the Red Sox lead five to three. It's a single for Mantia to left field, driving in Tony Horton. And what Trash tried to do on that ball was let. Horton think he was going to catch it on the fly. The only trouble was it's two out and he'd be running anyway. And then the ball hit about six inches from Tresh's leg and he could not get his glove on it. It actually caromed off both legs. Then he had to pick it up. And that fraction of a second cost him getting the runner at the plate. Thomas takes the ball. Mantia went to second on the throw to the plate. And for Mantia now, that's his 59th run bat at the end of the year. He leads the American League in that department. Nucklas won out and missed. One on one. So it's two out. A double by Horton and a single by Mantia. Swing and a miss, strike two. And it's deep and is getting two quick strikes on all the Red Sox hitters. Mantia's got quick wrist. Pitch outside. Two balls, two strikes. That was a big run for the Red Sox. Put some two up over the Yankees here in the bottom of the seventh. Two-two pitch outside, ball three. Full count, three and two. On deck is Canigliaro. And the pitch foul back out of play. The ball went right into the broadcasting booth where Craig Gowdy and Mel Parnell do the game for the Red Sox. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Mantia at second. of Howard's glove, so Thomas gets a life. Leon Wagner is just homing in the eighth with one on to give the Indians a four to two lead. They're still playing the bottom of the eighth out in Cleveland. Terry pitching. There's a fly ball going foul down the right field line. Lee Thomas broke his bat. So he'll go back for a new one. While he's getting a new piece of lumber, we'll pause for station identification. Your attention, please. You are listening to Yankee Baseball over WOKO 1460, Albany, New York. Thank you. All right, Thomas is ready. Keep an hour delivered. It's pop foul near the Red Sox dugout. Pepperstone. Backhands at Marcelani leaning into the dugout. Boy, he made that look easy. It was a difficult chance. But the Red Sox come up with one run on two hits. No Yankee errors. One man left. And at the end of seven full innings, it's the Red Sox five, 
the Yankees three. been on the road for several hours, you're ready to stop for a stretch. By now, your windshield may have picked up some road dust. Your gasoline gauge is way down, too. Then straight ahead, you see the Red Ball sign, Atlantic Red Ball Dealer Service. And in you go for a tank full of Atlantic Imperial gasoline and guaranteed Red Ball service. Your Red Ball dealer will always clean your windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check your oil, or your gasoline purchase is free. This offer may vary in some states. The service never varies. It's for every customer, every time. So drive in where you see the red ball sign and keep on the go with Atlantic. When they get up to that 500 mark, they're just one game under 500. They win this one, and they will be at that magic mark. They trail by two going into the eighth. It'll be Kubek, Tresh, and Howard to face Mon Boquette. Tony is two for three, single to center in the first inning, single to right in the third, bounce to second in the fifth. Von Bouquet delivers a curve, hit in the ground to first base, off the glove and then in again and the throw to Von Bouquet in time. And Orton caught that ball with his bare hand, he's shaking it now. He went down for that ball, it took a wicked hop. And it hit his bare hand and he juggled it momentarily, but was able to hold on to it and flip to Von Bouquet for the out. One away. Here's Tresh. Tommy's 0 for 3. He is flying to center, flying to right, and pops to short. Horton moves in at first now. Somebody from the Red Sox bench yells for him to look out for the bunt. Pitch to Tommy. Takes it high. Ball one. Howard on deck. Mumbo gets the sign from Tillman. Delivers outside, ball two, two and nothing. Two nothing pitches, a curve over strike called a good change up curve ball. I think he scored three runs off Mondo Kett in the first inning, but since that first inning, he has not allowed more than one man on base in any inning. Fastball swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. One out and nobody on here in the top of the eighth. Right-hander kicks, delivers a foul back out of play. Still two and two on Trey. Curve is line foul outside of first, bouncing into the stand. Still two and two. taking a little extra time. He winds. His curve is outside. And it's a full count. Three and two. Big pitch in the ball game coming up. On deck, Elson Howard. Here's the payoff set. Drive base hit to right field by Tress. Canigliaro in. He's up with it, and Tresh is on with a line single to right field. And that brings the potential dang run to the plate, Elston Howard. Ten hits now for the Yankees in the ball game. same as the Red Sox. Kelly is flying to center, struck out, bounced to the shortstop. On deck is Pepitone. And Dick 
Gladys gets up again in the Red Sox bullpen. Fresh at first, Thornton holding him on. Stretched by Mambo. Pitch to Howard, high and outside ball one. Howard has hit a home run in the previous two games against the Red Sox. Stretch again. The pitch is hit high in the air to right center field. Back near the wall. This one's going to be off the wall and just missing a home run by inches. Oh, they might have Howard. The throw is not in time. Holy cow, there was a traffic jam at second base. Tommy Stretch became confused. I think he thought it was in there. You know, maybe I'm exaggerating, but it looks to me no more than an inch from being a home run. I don't think you're exaggerated at all, Phil. Uh, Stretch thought it was a home run and uh, was uh, at second base. He knows now that the play's over, nothing he can do. And Howard, who was running hard all the way, uh, just about got himself trapped between first and second. That ball missed a home run by a matter of a foot or so. I'm telling you, it hit coming down. It seemed to hit just below the top of the fence where the screen meets the fence. A high drive to deep left center. And Tommy, who is a real good base runner and very fast, is kicking the bag now down at second base because that was a big play. Howard would have easily gone to second. Trash possibly could have scored with a chance to go to third, and that would have put the uh, tying run at second base. But now as it stands, the Yankees at first and second with one out, the batter is Pepitone. Pepitone is two for three, double to right, fly to center, single to right, and here comes Billy Herman. Stalling to give Raddatz a little extra time, and let's see if Herman is going to bring in Raddatz. I tell you, Howard will never come closer to getting a home run and ending up with one of the longest singles you've ever seen in his life. And it had to be quick thinking by Howard to get back to first. He was better than two thirds of the way down to second. You can see his spike marks out there in the infield where he had to stop and turn around. And the only thing that saved him was when the throw came into second base, Schilling went to tag Trish and wasted that fraction of a second. But while we've got time out there, let's turn it over to Joe. In other baseball, the Washington Senators lead the Detroit Tigers by the score of 5-3 to three in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Wickersham, Fox, and Nishwick all working for Detroit. Naram and Bridges working for Washington. Horton hit his 18th home run of the year in the fifth with nobody on. Lock in a fourth with one man on. They're going to make a pitching change, and that's the reaction that you hear. Dick Raddatz is going in for the Red Sox to replace the Bill Mambo Cut. At the end of eight innings, it's the Cleveland Indians four, the Baltimore Orioles two. Apples against Terry, and the tie, the 2-2 two -two tie was broken by Leon Wagner with a home run the eighth with a man on. Kansas City and Chicago, Los Angeles trying to get underway. In the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals three, the New York Mets one at the end of four, Perky, four St. Louis, Cisco, Miller, and Cole all working for New York. Johnny Lewis the home run the fourth with nobody on for the Mets. Looks like four foot up, you want at the end of seven. Ket gets a nice hand as he walks off the field. Cincinnati four foot off to one end of seven. Nuts all against Burdett. Burdett has replaced Polinski for the Phillies. And Harper, a home run in the fifth with one man on. Milwaukee four and Pittsburgh two at the end of five. Fisher against Brennan Law. Rico Cardi, a home run in the fifth with a man on. Bob Bailey hit one for Pittsburgh in the first with nobody on. Chicago four, San Francisco three at the end of four. Bowen replaced Herbal in the second inning for the Giants, and Bob Buell is pitching for the Cubs. Jim Ray Hart, a home run in the third with a man on for San Francisco. Don Landrup in the first with one man on for the Cubs. Los Angeles will use Austin. Houston will pitch Claude Raymond. So that's the baseball as Dick Raddatz comes on with base runners at first and second, one man out, and Joe Pepitone, the hitter. 
Yes, sir, Phil, that's about as long a single as you'll ever see. They oh, want to know it is. That's for sure. Big break for the Red Sox, but the Yankees still have the threat going. Pepitone is two for three, and Radis is making his 30th appearance of the year. He's won four and lost six, but the big fella's having an off year. His earned run average is 5.56. They don't call him the monster for nothing. He's 6'5", 235 pounds. All right, Radis is ready. Pepitone steps in. The Red Sox lead five to three here in the top of the eighth. Ron Burkett worked seven in the third inning. He gave up 11 hits, didn't walk anybody, struck out three, and has been charged with three runs. The pitch to Pepitone. Almost hit him. Oh, man, did Pepitone go down. And he turns around, looks out at Rennett, but with a grin. He doesn't want to make this big fella any madder than he is right now. I'm telling you, there were quick reflexes by Pepitone. Stretched by Raddatz. His pitch, he held up in a tie ball two. Two and nothing. And Raddatz was not too happy with that ball. Right now, there's very little that's making Raddatz happy. Two balls, no strikes on Joe. The stretch, the pitch, he popped it up. The infield fly rule is called. Pepitone is automatically out, and Schilling makes the catch. So Raddatz gets a big out, and it'll bring up Pepitone, rather, Lopez. Hector single left in the first inning, driving in two runs. Then he bounced a short hit into a double play. Fresh remains at second. Howard at first. Roger Repose. And Hector Lopez wants the umpire to take a look at the ball. Johnny Wright does, and he's going to throw it out of play. All right, Lopez steps in. Stretched by Raddatz. His pitch is high, ball one. Power at first, stretch at second with two outs. Red Sox leading 5 3. The stretch, the pitch is lying to left field, but right at least. Top of the eighth, no runs, two hits. No Red Sox errors, two men left at the end of seven and a half. It's the Red Sox five, the Yankees three. Mosquito. 
And Bob Tiefenau will be pitching to Tony Canigliao, Eddie Brasseur, and Bob Tillman here in the bottom of the eighth, the Red Sox leading 5-3. out in front four to three in the fourth inning and they added another run in the seventh the pitch to tony high outside ball one next pitch swing and a miss strike one one and one if canigliao can never cut down on his strikeouts he's going to be some hitter because he's got plenty of power there's no doubt about that strike two he went after a bad knuckle Dean Holmes and 38 runs out of them. Another knuckler. He pops this one up. Boyer and Howard over there. Boyer falling and makes the catch right alongside the Yankee dugout. One out. That brings up Eddie Brasseau. Single to left, line to right, and struck out. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Fenway Park. Keep an hour's first pitch gets away from Howard. Back to the screen, ball one. Joe will give us a wrap up of all the scores at the end of this inning. And now his next pitch is swing and a miss, strike one, one and one. That ball really dense. For two at the time, looks like a butterfly. We up, big yellow butterfly flying around in front of home plate. Knuckler is outside. Sometimes that knuckleball looks like a butterfly coming in. The way it dances up there. Like Garrett Viola not only looks like an all-star announcer, but a Hollywood star. He wears these dark sunglasses. Mysterious looking. Line drive to right field. My seat up. Get it. Third hit off Keith and here is Dick Rattus. And I guess 
Raddatz is wondering. They are really getting on him here. He's a fair hitter, though. He's been up 15 times with five base hits. That's a 333 average. That's a right-handed. Fouls him off the end of the bat. Right in the Red Sox dugout. Strike one. He has one home run and one run batted in. The next pitch is low one and one. Keep an hour set. Delivers low, ball two. Two and one. Each team has 11 base hits. Tillman with a short lead at first. There's a swing and a miss. Strike two, two and two. Now gets the sign from Howard. Now he's ready. Foul tip back to the screen. Keep an hour rubs up the new ball. See, the Yankees will have the bottom third of their order coming up in the top of the ninth. Knuckler is over, strike three, ball. Raddatz is called out, shaking his head a little bit, thought it might have been outside. For the Red Sox, no runs, one hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. And at the end of eight, it's the Red Sox five, the Yankees three, and now we turn the mic over to Joe Cooper as we pause for station identification. Joe G. Okay, Phil, in the Detroit-Washington game, it's at the end of seven now. It's Washington six, Detroit three. Lock a two-run homer. Horton has a home run in a fifth with nobody on. That's uh, Horton, uh, Willie Horton's 18th home run of the year. Fine against Sherry, both in relief. Final score is Cleveland four, Baltimore two. Happens to lose it, carry the winner. Wagner, home run the eighth with one man on. That was a big blast. And Cleveland... Now, they have won 18 of their last 22. 19 out of 23. 18 out of 22. It's 19 out of 23. Leon Wagner, a big home run. Terry gave up six hits. Pappas gave up only seven, a real pitcher's battle. Minnesota will use Pasquale. Kansas City will use Talbot in that game. Chicago and Los Angeles not get underway. San Luis four, Mets one. Berkey all the way for St. Louis. Kroll in relief for the Mets. Buchak home on the six with nobody on. So it's at least a five to one ball game now. St. Louis still batting. Lewis in the fourth with nobody on for the Mets. End of eight now. It's Cincinnati four. Philadelphia one. Nuts all against Burdett. Burdett in relief for Polinski. Harper has a two-run homer. Milwaukee four and Pittsburgh two. Fisher against Law. Had Yaroni a home run the fifth. Bailey in the first. Rico Carty had one for the Braves in the fifth with the man on. Chicago four and San Francisco three again the fourth bowling against McDaniel. Fourth in the lead. Carter two run homer. Landrum a two run homer. Los Angeles one. Houston nothing. Bottom of the second off scene against Raymond. That's it, Phil. All right, Joe. Here's Roger Rapole. Over three today. Swings and misses a fastball strike one. Roger is struck out. Foul to the catcher and fly deep to center field. The Yankees need two to tie here in the top of the ninth. As Dick Raddatz firing those little BBs up there to the plate. Wines delivers, swinging a foul tip back. Nothing in two. Boyer is on deck, and then we'll have a pinch hitter for Bob Tiefenau. And Jake Gibbs is running in from the bullpen. Pitch swing and a miss, strike three. On that 
pitch. Raddick came more overhand than we've ever seen him throw. He's been throwing a sidearm almost underhand. First strikeout for Raddick, and it brings up Boyer. Cleet's been red hot. Single in the second, single in the fourth, and doubled in the seventh. Three for three for Boyer, who has an 11-game hitting streak. Cleet talking to Johnny Rice. He wants to make sure he's settled in the plate before that Raddatz is ready to pitch. Actually, Raddatz doesn't have to look for a sign. He just rears back and fires. Pitch to Boyer. Cleet starts the front, takes the strike. And Jake Gibbs is coming out on deck, swinging a couple of bats. Pitch fouled back to the screen, strike two. That's five straight strikes that Raddatz has thrown this inning. Three to repose, two to Boyer. And when he can throw as hard as he does, there's no sense wasting. One out in the top of the ninth, the Red Sox lead five to three. Raddatz winds, delivers way outside ball one. Pitch is hit in the air to left field. Didn't get the good wood on it. Thomas is right there, moving in now and makes the count. He hit that one near the handle. It's two out, and here's Jake Gibbs batting for Bob keeping out. Gibbs batting 333. Been up six times with two base hits, one double. Richardson on deck. So the Yankees down to their last out here in the top of the ninth inning. Raddus delivers his swing and a miss strike one. Takes a couple extra swings outside the batter's box. Trying to get real loose. Next pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. One fastball was outside, one he crowded him. So it's nothing in two. Raddus winds, kicks, delivers, foul back off the screen. One ball, two strikes. Not too many people leaving the ballpark. Quite a few have gotten up, but they're standing in the aisles. The one ball, two strike pitch. Struck him out. A high fastball. And Mattis retires the Yankees in order. Nothing to throw Ball game is over. The final score, the Red Sox 5, the Yankees 3, and Joe Garagiola will be right back in one minute with the totals and the highlights. We're honored once again to be broadcasting from the cave of the incredible 2,500-year-old brewmaster. Sir, we think that today's Valentine beer is the best beer yet. I wonder, were you around when the very first beer was invented? Oh, yes. And when was that? Well, I, it was in the year four and a half months. It wasn't even a year yet. When beer was invented. It wasn't even a year. And I'll never forget that beer. It was mainly foam. It was such foam. It was so much foam that you had to drink for two days before you got to the beer. Whereas with Valentine beer... But Valentine is just enough foam and just enough beer. And it's loaded with, with all kinds of wonderful flavors. It's the beer with spirit. Are you the man from Valentine? Yes, I hey, am. Why am I telling you this? You should be telling I'm me. I'm delighted to hear you tell me You're this. You're some dummy. If you want to start living a life that's lively, live it with spirit. Valentine beer. There's more spirit to it.
Well, the story of this ball game is wrapped up in the pitching of Mambo Kett and Dick Raddatz and some timely hitting, especially by Finigliaro and Mantia.